The Suhoi Su-57 Felon is a fifth-generation multirole stealth fighter jet developed by United Aircraft, UAC, part of the state-owned defense corporation Rostec, to destroy a variety of ground, air, and sea targets. The Su-57 Felon was developed by the Suhoi Design Bureau under the auspices of the UAC. The aircraft made its maiden flight at the Gromov Flight Testing Institute airfield in October 2022. The aircraft remained in the air for 56 minutes and completed the flight efficiently. The fighter jet was also successfully tested in combat conditions in Syria in 2018. The Russian Air Force is the main operator of the aircraft. In 2022, the Su-57 Felon was involved in a special military operation against Ukraine, to launch long-range air-to-surface or air-to-air -air missiles into Ukraine. Orders and Deliveries In August 2018, the Russian Defense Ministry signed a contract with the Suhoi Company, part of the UAC, to deliver the first two Su-57 fighters in 2020. The Suhoi Company signed an additional state contract with the Defense Ministry to deliver 76 Su-57 fighters, including the first two, to the Russian Aerospace Forces at the Army 2019 International Arms Exhibition. Serial production of the Su-57 began at the UAC's Komsomolsh on Amur aircraft plant in July 2019. In December 2020, the Russian Aerospace Forces received the first Su-57 fighter with an operational first-stage engine, which was used by one of the aviation regiments of the Southern Military District. Four more Su-57 aircraft were delivered to the Russian forces in 2021. Deliveries of Su-57 fighters with second-stage engines began in 2022. The Russian Air Force is expected to receive 22 Su-57 fighters by the end of 2024, which is expected to increase to 76 by 2028. Design and Features of the Su-57 Felon Fighter Jet The advanced Su-57 fighter jet has stealth technology. It is developed with extensive use of composite materials such as polymers, glass fibers, and load-bearing aluminum honeycomb fillers. These materials enable low radar and infrared signatures to ensure sustained supersonic cruise flight. The aircraft is equipped with 3D thrust vector jets for higher maneuverability. Short takeoff, network centricity, and multi-role capabilities are other features that meet the criteria for a fifth-generation aircraft. Avionics the fighter jet is equipped with a completely new integrated avionics suite that features a high level of controlled automation and intelligent crew support. The aircraft is equipped with the most advanced radio electronic equipment, including a second electronic pilot, which is a sophisticated computer, and other innovative solutions, such as the placement of weapons inside the fuselage. The aircraft's avionics system includes an active electronically scanned array AESA, radar and an ELINT system. The aircraft is also equipped with communications equipment modernized by the Polyot Research and Production Enterprise within the Russelectronics Group, which is part of Rostec, Su-57 variants. The Su-57E Perspective Multirole Fighter is an export variant of the Su-57 fighter jet. It can perform a wide range of combat missions day and night using modern guided and unguided weapons. The Su-57E is an advanced fighter equipped with the most advanced avionics, weapons and self-defense systems. Its high level of automation ensures efficient execution of combat missions by one pilot. Armament The Su-57 is equipped with air-to-surface missiles for engaging ground targets and air-to-air -air missiles for long-range air combat. It is also armed with a 30mm air gun for close combat operations. The fighter has two large internal weapons compartments, each capable of carrying up to 4K77M air-to-air -air missiles. Engines and Performance The Su-57 is a twin-engine stealth fighter jet powered by Isdali A117 or AL-41 F1 turbofan engines. Future production aircraft will be equipped with the new Isdali A30 engines. The aircraft can fly at speeds of up to Mach 2 without afterburners. It can reach a range of up to 3,500 kilometers at subsonic speed. A Russian Su-57 Felon fighter jet recently landed in Iran on its way home from the Aero India 2025 International Air Show. It appears to be the first known instance of one of Russia's new generation jets stopping over in Iran for any reason. 
Satellite imagery shows the felon has been at Iran's Bundar Abbas Air Base in the southeastern tip of the country for several days, and it's not entirely clear if it has now departed. TWZ obtained satellite imagery, seen at the top of this story, showing the Su-57 at Bundar Abbas, located on the Persian Gulf, on February 19 from Maxar Technologies. A pair of U.S.-made P-3 Orion Maritime Patrol aircraft, sold to Iran before the fall of the Shah in 1979, and a Russian-made IL-76 Candid cargo plane were also seen. This is in line with a video, seen below, that has emerged purportedly showing the felon, which has the board number Blue 054, at an Iranian base next to a Russian IL-76 registered RA-76373. The Candid was also in India on February 18, according to online flight tracking data. Iran also operates the IL-76. Additional imagery from Planet Labs reviewed by TWZ appears to show the Su-57, as well as two P-3s and an IL-76, at the same location at Bundar Abbas on February 21. Only the Orion is still visible there in subsequent planet imagery taken yesterday. Whether the Su-57 has now left Bundar Abbas or perhaps has simply been moved to another part of the base remains unclear. Another video, seen below, purportedly shows the jet taking off at the Iranian base and has been circulating online since at least February 20. At the same time, there have been unconfirmed claims circulating on social media that the felon's stay in Iran was extended due to engine problems. Satellite imagery showing the jet still there as of at least February 21 would lend credence to the claim. Engine problems are of course a recurring theme in the Su-57's history. Russian military aircraft have used Iranian bases in the past, including as staging points for combat operations in Syria. Bundar Abbas is a logical intermediary point between Bengaluru in India where the Aero India 2025 exhibition is being held and Russia's current main Su-57 base at Oktubinsk Air Base in the far southeast of the country. The Su-57's appearance in Iran does come amid renewed discussions about the jet's future on the open market, with Algeria becoming the type's first export customer. It would appear to be a significant boost for the felon, which has been slow to enter Russian service, let alone attract foreign sales. Algeria's announcement came earlier this month around the Aero India 2025 show, where the jet also shared the runway for the first time with the US F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. The bilateral partnership between Russia and India on the Su-57 that began in the early 2000s collapsed in 2018. There is no clear indication that Russia might have used the opportunity to more formally showcase the Su-57 to Iranian officials in Bundar Abbas. There have been no credible reports of any active Iranian interest in acquiring the felon. Even if Iran were to move to operate the Su-57, there would be immediate questions about its ability to operate and maintain the aircraft. The felon is dramatically more complex than anything else in Iran's aging fighter inventory. Iran has said it is in the process of acquiring the Russian Su-35 Flanker E which would also represent a major upgrade in capability over its existing fleet of tactical jets. The sale has been linked to Iran's assistance to Russia in relation to the ongoing conflict in Ukraine, most notably the sale of kamikaze drones and helping Moscow build its capacity to produce them domestically. There is added pressure now for Tehran to beef up its air and missile defense capabilities and Capacities after Israel struck several valuable sites and key assets deep inside the country with near impunity last year. It is worth noting that it is unclear whether any Israeli aircraft ever entered Iranian airspace during those operations. Regardless of whether Blue 054 remains at Bundar Abbas or Su 57s are starting to appear more frequently in Iran, the stopover at the Iranian base comes at a new moment in the felon story. There's no doubt that Russia is taking its time developing its own sixth-generation fighter, but that's not a sign of weakness. Russia wants to get involved in the race for a sixth-generation fighter. So far, the United States, the People's Republic of China, and two European powers are developing their own sixth-generation fighters. The leaders in this field, for now, are China and the United States. But Russia's Suhoi Design Bureau is quietly leading the development of another sixth-generation fighter. Suhoi Talks Plane Design, Yevgeny Fedosov, 
scientific director of the State Research Institute of Aviation Systems, told Russian media last year, we are thinking about the concept of a sixth-generation aircraft, conducting research, and exchanging views with military experts. Fedosov explained that the sixth-generation aircraft will appear around 2050, but now we need to understand what a future armed conflict will look like. It is believed that Suhoi based its design for a potential sixth-generation fighter on the Su-57 inches felon, NATO reporting name, Russia's fifth-generation fighter. The fact that it is an export aircraft that, until recently, has struggled to find an export market should have nothing to do with the fact that Suhoi is basing its possible sixth-generation aircraft on the Su-57. In fact, the Su-57 is a very capable aircraft. In fact, some reports suggest that the much-vaunted Su-57 is close to the capabilities of a sixth-generation fighter. One of the most important aspects of a prospective sixth-generation Suhoi fighter, aside from its enhanced stealth capabilities, is the need for a new power plant. Currently, Russian engineers lack a power plant that can easily switch between supersonic and hypersonic air travel while using as little fuel as possible. A sixth-generation fighter must be capable of both supersonic and hypersonic maneuvers at long ranges, which means more power and, therefore, more fuel consumption. So, the key for Russia must be the development of a new engine that can meet this challenge. The aircraft's artificial intelligence factor. Despite these complications, the Suhoi Design Bureau is more than capable of building a sixth-generation fighter, especially given the relatively long schedule that Russia has set. Fedosov has noted that he anticipates Suhoi's sixth-generation fighter will utilize artificial intelligence AI, allowing it to connect with and control autonomous systems, particularly drones. In January of this year, Russian President Vladimir Putin ordered the Russian government and the country's largest bank, Esperbank, to work with China to jointly develop artificial intelligence. China has proven that it can match the United States in the field of AI development. Therefore, Russia partnering with China could boost its own AI development, and, in turn, further Suhoi's efforts to develop a capable sixth-generation fighter. Crucial to Russia's plans is its willingness to wait. Unlike the United States and China, which are pushing the limits of their sixth-generation designs to get these systems into mass flight within the next decade, no matter how unlikely or impractical that may seem, Suhoi is taking a more cautious approach to its sixth-generation aircraft development. Indeed, Fedosov acknowledges that both the United States and China have significant advantages over Russia, and does not believe that a working Suhoi prototype will be available until much later than the Chinese and Americans think their systems will get into the air. By waiting, Russia becomes strategic. However, delaying the aircraft's development may have cost-saving advantages for Russia. After all, it could gain access to Chinese and American sixth-generation engineering techniques thereby eliminating some of the high costs associated with the R&D cycle for such a project. China is notorious for this strategy. From the 1990s onward, its aerospace industry was able to save substantial costs by leveraging existing American and Russian technology, sometimes through illicit means. In the coming years, Russia may be able to turn the tables, employing a similar strategy against Beijing. Other reports from Russia about Suhoi's proposed sixth-generation fighter suggest that there is a real difference of opinion among Russian engineers over whether their new sixth-generation aircraft should be tailored for beyond visual range combat, similar to America's current F-35 Lightning II, or whether it should be built for close in combat, which is more in line with the role of the Suhoi Su-57. How Suhoi ultimately responds to this debate will inform the outcome and timing of the program. Moreover, whichever model the American and Chinese systems ultimately favor will likely have a significant impact on how Russia builds its own aircraft. Of course, the Americans and Chinese may still learn the most important lesson. Regardless of which country develops it, a sixth-generation fighter is a very expensive project that offers few advantages over a fifth-generation fighter and distracts war planners from developing cheaper, more efficient systems. If Russia sees how poorly the American and Chinese sixth-generation fighters are performing and are charging too much, Moscow may decide to scrap the program altogether and instead focus on building a large number of cheaper, stealthy drones.
Still, there is no doubt that Russia is taking its time developing its own sixth generation fighter. This is not a sign of weakness. Rather, it is a sign of wisdom, letting the underlying technology mature and seeing where Russia's main competitors on the world stage, the United States and China, eventually land their sixth generation systems. After all, battle goes not to the swift or the strong, but to the survivors.